my phone, wallet, keys, knife, light, multi-tool, and gun, I can all hold in one hand now. But let's get this out of the way first. There's butts on my shirt. What's going on guys, back with another episode of Stuff and Things, and today I'm bringing you guys an EDC update or stuff and things that I carry with me every day. I got a lot of good feedback on the first EDC video that I made, and since then my setup has changed a little bit. The reason it's taken me a little bit to put this video out is because one, I needed to get the new items that I wanted to carry and rotate into my setup, and two, I needed some time actually carrying the things that I got, that way I can give you a good honest opinion on what I think about them. So the last thing I want to do is waste your time, I'm going to keep this short and simple, let's just jump right into it. First up, thing that has not changed at all, my cell phone. Yes, I'm an Android fan, I'm rocking the Nexus 6P with a case that I got off Amazon. I'm still rocking the pop socket on the back of this thing. This was new to me in my last EDC update, but it's basically a phone holder. It can be a phone stand, you can wrap headphones around it and all sorts of stuff like that and then it folds down flat, so it really doesn't add that much bulk to your phone. A ton of people ask me questions about it, and my favorite thing is that you don't need to put your pinky underneath the phone, so if I'm laying in bed at night, I'm always on my phone, so this will make sure you don't really drop it on your face or anything like that. Next up, my wallet. This is where I started to slim things down a little bit. I'm still using the Trayvax Contour that I've talked about in a bunch of different videos. I actually did a video on just Trayvax and all their wallets. This Contour is their fancy, expensive wallet. It's really not for everyone, but I got this wallet because I backed them on Indiegogo. Previously, I was carrying their Contour just as a wallet and their original wallet as a business card holder for my YouTube cards. But since then, I really haven't been handing these out, so I slipped a couple in with my regular wallet and credit cards and stuff like that, and it's been working fine. This is obviously a micro EDC, so I'm trying to cut down as much stuff as possible. In the front of this wallet, I'm still carrying a Go comb that I got on Amazon. It's just an all-metal comb with a pretty cool looking design. This is especially great for dudes who don't want their beards to be looking like shit. You get the idea. And then like I've said before, business cards, regular cards, and cash. Now onto my keys. This is where things start to change a little bit. I'm still rocking everything on this plastic wiregate carabiner from Black Diamond. Still got my STI fob, my house key, and before I was carrying this Gerber shard. This thing has been on my keychain for the longest time, so I was kind of sad to see it go, but I think the replacement is a little bit better. So taking place of the shard is this little Gerber dime. You can find a million reviews of this little thing all over YouTube, but the main reason I got it is for the pliers. I can't tell you how many times I've needed small pliers like this in a pinch, no pun intended. So that's the main reason I decided to switch to a multi-tool like this. Another thing I like about this is how all the tools are accessible from the outside, so you don't need to open up the pliers to get to any tools. One of the tools that I use a lot is this chisel ground package opener. It's great for clamshell packages and opening cardboard boxes, pretty much anything like that. I use this flat driver a lot for prying like I did with the Gerber shard. It has scissors on here, which are kind of junk in my opinion. I prefer the Victor Knox scissors, but they do the job. It's got a sheep's foot blade, which is pretty nice because it's not chisel ground like a lot of other small multi-tool knives are. Got a bottle opener, obviously, because you know I like to drink. There's also one more tool in here that a lot of people skip in reviews that I've seen of this thing. I'm not sure if they just skip it on purpose or they don't know it's there, but up here by the bottle opener, there's this little tab right here, and if you pull that out, there's actually tweezers in here as well. These are just small metal tweezers, but surprisingly, they're really useful. I'm sure somebody's gonna ask, so this little clip is from a Streamlight Nano that I don't use anymore, and that's how I hold it on my keys. Next thing is my flashlight. Last time I told you that someone stole my favorite flashlight, so I went out and bought another one, and that is the Streamlight MicroStream. Super simple EDC light, it's just a single AAA with a clicky tail cap in the back. Another cool thing about this pocket clip is that if you wear a hat forward like this, you can pull this clip down and slide it on the front of your hat, and then this acts like an improvised headlamp if you're ever trying to work on a car or do something with your hands. Simple, easy, effective, and some people think that it's weird to carry a flashlight, but I can tell you carrying one of these is way more simple than pulling out your phone and fumbling through your menus when you're trying to turn a light on. Now onto the thing that a lot of you guys are probably gonna disagree with or laugh about. Previously, I was primarily carrying the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. There's a ton of awesome videos on this knife and you can't say enough good things about it. The reason I like Spyderco so much is for their blade shapes and their full flat grinds. And this knife is still awesome. I use it all the time, but it's not what you'll find in my pocket now. Nowadays. If you've been following my videos, you'll know that I slice my finger open pretty damn good with this blade, and that got me thinking, why do I need a blade this big when all I really do with it is open mail and packages and stuff like that? So that is why my EDC blade went from this to this. This is the Spyderco Man Bug. Super small, super lightweight, but it's still actually an awesome knife. It's got the same full flat grind just like the paramilitary too. Oversized spidey hole if you can even call it oversized because it is so small. Lockback design with their signature FRN handles with that grip on them, similar to the Delica. And this 
this thing may look all cute and seem like a toy, but it's actually a really sharp, durable blade. It's got a really good thumb ramp and good jimping, even though it's only about a three finger blade. So I went and put this little knot of paracord on here to give my pinky something to grab onto. So I can really put a lot of pressure on this blade and use it just as I would a bigger knife. A super tight lockup, literally no blade play at all. It's just a super robust little knife. This is actually a little torque screw here, so you could tighten the blade if you needed to. And yes, you can open and close it with one hand. What's nice about this design is that when you are closing it with one hand and you pinch the back lock, the blade falls forward like that, but the blade doesn't actually come in contact with your finger. This non-sharpened edge is the first thing to come in contact with your finger, and I've opened it and closed it one-handed hundreds of times, and I have not cut myself yet. As for the sharpness of this thing, I actually just cut through a leather gun belt the other day, which I'll show you in a little bit. This thing rides up front in my little coin pocket on my right-hand side. It's completely out of the way, and sometimes I even forget that it's there. And that's the whole reason behind this. I'm trying to keep everything as small and lightweight as possible. Next up is my gun. Yes, I'm still carrying appendix, but no, it is not not my G19 anymore. I'm back to carrying my Springfield XDS in 9mm because my Glock is out getting some work done, which you'll see a video about in a couple weeks from now. This is riding in a Kydex holster made by QVO, which I've talked about before in some previous videos. My buddy out in Vegas makes these holsters, so if you want to show him some support, I'll leave his link down in the description below. This gun is hot right now, but I'm not going to take one out of the chamber just for this video. I've already given my opinion on this gun in another video. It's single stack, 9mm, super easy to carry. It's got nice sights and nice fiber optic post up front. The grip texturing is a little bit rough so I have some talon grips on here, a pierce pinky extension, and since my last EDC update I switched to Federal HST 124 grain. I've been wanting to try these rounds for the longest time and I finally got around to picking some up. It's definitely one of the best carry loads right now and I definitely recommend checking it out, doing some research on it and seeing what is so great about them. One thing that I think this gun is a little bit underrated for is appendix carry because of the safety features on it. What I really like about this and what makes me feel safe carrying it appendix style is the way that you can reholster this gun while still remaining pretty safe. Drawing from concealment is same as always, but then when you go to reholster, I tend to loosen my grip and then put my thumb right on the back of the slide here. What that does is ensure that my hand is not on this grip safety back here, so there's no way that the gun can go off while getting snagged on a t-shirt or anything like that. So with my hand off the grip safety, it goes right back into the holster, nothing to worry about. Like I said, this gun will be with me for the next couple of weeks, but I'm stoked to show you guys what I'm doing to my Glock 19. Now for the final thing in my EDC setup, this is something that I never really thought about before. I have seen a bunch of videos on it, but I really couldn't put my finger on which one I actually wanted to get and that was gun belts. After doing some research I found one that I liked the looks of that I could wear every day whether I was carrying a gun or not and that's what brought me to this belt right here. This is a 511 EDC belt and if for some reason you don't know the difference between a gun belt and a regular belt let me go grab another one to show you what I mean. This is a belt that I used for the longest time just a simple leather belt. I carried a gun with this belt for the longest time so you can see how kind of stretched out and like weirdly shaped it is. Not thick at all really flimsy you can just see how it bends and crushes under my finger pressure. This is a complete opposite of what you want in a gun belt. So a belt like this is super rigid. As you can see, it's the size of my waist even when it's not on my waist. It's not floppy. It doesn't roll out on itself or anything like that. When I put vertical pressure on this thing, I couldn't bend it in half even if I tried to. It's made out of some kind of mil spec type of nylon. It's got this metal D-ring buckle that can hold up to like 6,000 pounds or something like that. It's just a super durable heavy duty belt. So what makes this better than this floppy thing is obviously when you're carrying a lot of gear. I'm actually going to clear my gun for this demonstration because this probably isn't going to be very safe. Chamber's empty, yada yada yada, you get the idea. Put this gun in my QVO holster and then just try to hold the gun up, which as you can tell obviously isn't very easy to do. The gun is obviously, whoa, flopping around. It's really not sturdy at all. So this is a problem when your gun's on your side all the time. It's kind of loose and flopping around. It's not in the position that it's supposed to be in at all times. Now I'll put this on the gun belt. As you can see, not twisting nearly as much. Even when I'm shaking it around, it stays in the same spot. The belt isn't bending under the pressure or anything like that. And that's exactly what you want in a gun belt. Even for people who don't carry a gun all the time, I would definitely recommend looking into getting a belt like this because it makes my life so much easier. I've been wearing this thing every single day, whether I'm carrying or not, and it just does a really good job of holding up your pants, especially when you got a lot of stuff in your pockets. So once I realized how awesome gun belts actually are, a company who makes them reached out to me. Now this belt is being replaced by the one that I'm currently wearing and sort of testing right now. All right, this might get a little awkward. This is a Core Essentials Trackline belt. Looks like a kind of nice, fashionable leather belt, but it's actually a reinforced gun belt. Just like the last belt that I showed you, this thing is obviously super stiff. You cannot bend this thing in any way, shape, or form, which makes it awesome for carrying a bunch of gear and guns especially. What's really cool about this belt is the buckle design. The best way to describe this thing is like a giant zip tie. On the underside of the belt, you see these little ratchets right here. Under the buckle side, you'll see this little release lever right here, which can actually be used as a bottle opener as well. Right here, you'll see that the buckle can actually come off and you can 
can replace this with a little bit different of a design if you want to. And the way it works is super simple. Just slide it in just like you would a zip tie. And that's it. You release it by putting a little pressure on this lever comes right off. Now when I said that I cut a gun belt the other day with that Spyderco man bug, this is actually the belt that I cut. Might as well roll a couple clips in here to show you how sharp that thing really is. So when you get these belts, they come extra long to fit some of you bigger guys out there. And then this is the way that you cut them down to size. You find your belt size on the back of it right here, you add four inches to that, and then that's where you cut the belt at. Here's an example of another buckle style that they make, as well as a brown leather belt for maybe a little bit fancier of an occasion. They also make something for a problem that I didn't even know that I had. What this is is like a little clothes hanger type of hook and the belt's just clip right into here. It has a little ratchets in the back of it and the belt buckle just slides right up into it. So this is a super easy, convenient way to keep everything nice and tidy. And if you know me, you know that I like to be clean and organized. Might as well throw the gun on here and show you guys how that works. Just like the other belt fits super well and tight, it doesn't really roll or anything like that. It just stays exactly where you want it to be. Even when I shake this thing around, it's still sturdy, even more sturdy than that 511 belt. I've only been wearing this belt for the past three days now and I really like to have a more informed opinion on what I think about a product before I review it for you guys. So if I'm still wearing this in my next EDC update, I'll let you guys know how it is. My initial impressions of the belt is that they're really high quality and I think they're gonna last for a pretty long time. So the moral of that rant is that if you haven't had a gun belt yet, I definitely recommend getting one, whether you carry a gun or not, especially one like this Core Essentials belt. They look good, they function awesome, and you can't really go wrong with it. If you're interested in picking up a track line belt like this, go check out Core Essentials website and use the code TALENT at checkout for 10% off your next order. I'm gonna be using this thing for the next couple weeks and months, and if you guys get one, let me know what you guys think of it too. All right guys, that wraps up this EDC update. If you did like this video, please leave a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. I also create other content on this channel for tech, cars, motorcycles, partying, and some other cool stuff like that. Feel free to check that stuff out too. Leave some comments, let me know if we got some similar interest. That's it for today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you guys in the next one.